Music is such a vast art form that it can definitely choose who could serve music. And uh, the reason why I'm saying it is I, I couldn't choose the family in which I was going to be born and I couldn't choose my guru. In fact, uh, it just so happened that, you know, the, I was very, very fortunate to be born in a family where uh, music was always a passion and uh, it was uh, like practiced actively by my father, my uncle, my aunt. And I grew up I, from the day I was born, I, I could hear the, uh, ref, you know, the uh, musical performances. I could hear recordings of great maestros and uh, not just classical, but, you know, bhajan guzzles and all sorts of music was always there and I would by uh, by natural instinct I would just want to copy some of these songs and all that so that's how my interest started developing so in that uh, context yes I would definitely say that music chose me because I did not choose where I would be born and uh, again when I was uh, I had just started learning from uh, Sri Aran Varmaji um, after at the age of nine when my uncle had gifted me the sitar. So before sitar, I was learning violin because my father play, plays the violin. So uh, I started learning violin, but then my uncle was switching over to another sitar and he just thought, OK, why don't you try this instrument as well? And uh, I, I, I don't remember it clearly, but I think I started liking the sound of it and then uh, Varma sir had started teaching me he used to come home because uh, although my family uh, was practicing passionately music but they were all professional engineers and uh, doctors and they were not doing this as their main profession so uh, being in Bhilai where uh, you know good musical um, ambience was already developed when I had uh, when I had born, I had been born, and at that time, uh, Verma sir used to come and teach. And for about four years, when he saw that my interest and also the way I'm growing with the music uh, is something that could be groomed further, at that time he had suggested that uh, I should learn from Acharya Pandit Bimlendu Mukherjee. Now, the fact that he was also in Bhilai was a great blessing and that's again a, a great coincidence or something that I would say that you know it just fell in place that I such a great maestro was just right there and I could go to him and you know get his blessings and and uh, the talim started for about in this long association of over two decades I had the privilege of um, of getting associated and learned and kind of, you know, understood and uh, totally seeped uh, into his persona that with, uh, which is so rich with his music and musical understanding and life ex experiences as well. So all given all this, I would definitely say music chose me. Bringing out one's own individuality through the music is a key factor to uh, establish as a musician. And uh, a guru plays a very pivotal role in doing that. The way my Guruji would explain how, uh, how he is actually teaching and trying to get this out of me, he in fact told me once that he is, he is just exposing many, many musical ideas and uh, I would be receptive to some of the ideas because of my own personality 
and I would probably be less reciprocative to some of the musical ideas. And as a guru, he would actually guide me in the way I he he would see my strengths are in and the weaknesses he would try to enhance them. But at the same time, he would in that way, he would uh, make a style and bring out my own personality as per as per the uh, talim is concerned. Of course, as a musician, now it is up to me as well to introspect and go deeper and understand what am I uh, trying to achieve after the talim that has come, then I have to really churn it. I have to uh, really practice and with my riyas, with my sadhana, I have to bring out my own essence to that. And that I can probably do when I am 100% honest to my own self. So Guruji always used to say that uh, to be a good musician, you have to be a good human being first. And that is when you can be more transparent and the music will not have any barriers to come out through you. So the presence and when you say absence of a guru, I don't, I don't think Guru is ever absent at all. And uh, although my Guruji is not present in physical form at this point, he has passed on uh, just about 11 years ago. And uh, I, you know, there, it was a major shock. I, I did feel a little lost when, you know, he had pa passed on. And, but then, uh, in fact, he had only assured me that he, uh, you know, he had said this statement that uh, you close your eyes and whenever you close your eyes and play, I will always be there. So that is a big strength to me. And I know that that is why he is always present to guide me. So my individuality as a musician is still uh, getting refined by his guidance and by the guidance of all the other musicians with whom I have been interacting. The fact that I have been traveling, uh, you know, all throughout the world, I meet different musicians. I, uh, of course, listen to a lot of musicians. So that has also helped me in bringing out my own individual expression to the art form. My Guruji was uh, a very passionate musician, but he had consciously not taken this as a profession. So with this, he had actually a lot of accessibility to many professional musicians and they also would be very eager to interact with him because of his vast musical knowledge and at the same time not being like a competitor in their area. So they would openly share their musical knowledge and uh, musical experiences and in turn get enriched by Guruji's experiences. So I think this had really made, you know, his horizons go vaster. And when he started uh, to teach so many people and when he, uh, when he started, you know, to bring so many musicians to Bilai and, you know, interact with them, perform, give them opportunities and give them not just, you know, not just renowned musicians, but at very young musicians at that time, he would give opportunities to all those to perform. And he himself would be giving performances at, a, uh, you know, but of course, as I said, he was a very um, a senior office officer in Bilai Steel Plant as a profession. So his responsibilities were first towards that. But at the same time, you know, he somehow did so much for the Indian music. Um, con he contributed so much. And when people wanted to give him awards, he would very humbly say that this is only, you know, I'm doing this only because of my pure love for music. And I don't know if, you know, I should be accepting awards for something that I love so deeply. So, um, and, but of course he did, uh, he was felicitated by many 
organizations for his exemplary contributions to the Indian classical music. So I think as a performer, uh, he was never after fame or never after uh, any kind of recognition. And uh, even to us, when he was training us, he had constantly told us that um, music is the first responsibility is always towards yourself. First of all, you have to be 100% you know, satisfied with what you are doing and you should be happy when you are doing music and you should not just do, play it for the audience or just to get some fame. So, uh, but at the same time, you have to constantly self introspect. So you, you have, it's a pro process of growth. So it is something that you will never be satisfied for. So you will constantly keep growing. So that should be the approach when you, when you learn music and when you are even practicing it. If you want to go behind a certain f fame or something, then I don't, uh, I mean, he used to say that um, it will just divert your mind from the music and probably, you know, but of course being, uh, being famous and uh, that is because of your art form, if the recognition comes to you, then you have to really uh, still keep your uh, yourself, you know, your mind stable and not let get carried away with that and still always take this as a responsibility to take forward this art form and in turn not just stop there but to propagate it and to make it a make it your point to take it forward to as many people you can. The fact that some people if they say that um, today's world need does not need gurus. I don't know, because in each individual, there is a guru hidden anyways. So if you may not want a third person to be a guru, but the the term guru or the what you can say as the uh, the in Hindi, we say guru pad, meaning the you know, the, the stature of a guru is always there. That guru could be a guide within you or an external person. Now, as far as I am concerned, I was very, very fortunate. You know, my Guruji, uh, Pandit Bhimlindu Mukherjee was a very, very open-minded and a very affectionate uh, teacher. He was a polymath and a renaissance man and he single-handedly kind of transformed the central part of India when he was working there uh, into an oasis of music and given so much, con you know, given having done so much to, for this field of music, his only uh, aim to teach would be to propagate and promote this Indian music in its uh, flowing rich tradition as much as possible. So I felt that his doors were always open for anybody with a little quest of music and you would be filled tremendously. So if you have the quest, then you just go there and he would just, uh, you know, fill you with all his knowledge. There was no barriers that I would not teach or there is no restricting thinking. And in fact, uh, that's why probably there were students from all different countries who would come all the way down from France, Japan, uh, you know, America, so many other places, all the way to this small town in Chhattisgarh, now in Chhattisgarh, that time in Madhya Pradesh, uh, just to seek his guidance because he never would have any reservations. He never had any biases. He never would advocate any particular, uh, you know, uh, any particular style of music. He was open and he interacted with so many musicians himself that he would teach us and he would explain to us all those rich experiences that he had gathered from all his contemporary musicians, all his senior and his junior musicians. So it was like a rich 
treasure in one person. And I think that is something that makes him really great. And if, you know, if such gurus are there, then I'm sure the students will always be only benefited and not, uh, you know, not be dis dis disappointed. <laughs> I have now uh, spent such a long time with this beautiful instrument, the, the sustain, the beauty of the sound, the richness of uh, the, you know, the overtones, the harmonics that we get from this instrument. Um, I think it is the most beautiful instrument for me. Otherwise, I would not be, uh, you know, I would not be doing justice to the fact that I am a sitar player <laughs> if I am not happy and if I don't feel that it is bringing out my musicianship to the to the or doing justice to my musical abilities or whatever. Um, there is always um, this quest for refining the sound of the sitar, which is uh, which is still ongoing, I would say. But I do believe in uh, getting your own, you know, getting a sound that that kind of um, identifies you and to get that tone for myself. I mean, if uh, if somebody is listening to three or four different players, then they should immediately know that this is X playing, this is Y playing, this is Z playing. And that comes, I think, by your own practice and sadhana and also the, the, the instrument, the way you have kind of uh, spent time in understanding the sound of the instrument and bringing, using the sound to bring out your musicality. My quest is to find a sound which, which brings out the continuity of the sound and the aesthetics with rich overtones that there is no compromise on the timber of the instrument there is no compromise on um, the resonance of the instrument there is no compromise on the um, on the intonations that this instrument can bring uh, so now the unfortunately the you know instrument makers and the musicians they are two different people and, and to if the x is able to say something i mean feel something and if that is not conveyed to y then there is a uh, difference in so and if this sitar maker is not able to actually play and get the same uh, you know, sensitive approach towards um, what is exactly needed by the musician, then it is very difficult for him to, him or her to make a sitar for a third person, right? So that is why to be able to actually uh, find out, first thing you require is you have to be very clear what exactly you are looking for in your instrument. Second, you have to probably take help of people who understand what you really require to bring it out or you have to yourself you know uh, get involved so much that you you kind of choose a person who does what exactly you want that sitar maker or that person or instrument maker to do and that is probably how you can achieve this and what I'm looking for is, of course, uh, more um, oneness in my musicality and my instrument. The difference between riyas and sadhana. I don't know if we can actually call them very different, but they go hand in hand is what I believe. Riyas, of course, is something we do to achieve a certain proficiency in what we are trying to do, some achieve some skill 
achieve a certain finesse in our playing or in our singing and riaz is up to that level of you know kind of uh, it is like getting sharpening your tool riaz is something that is helping you in sharpening your tools and you have the tool but just riaz may not be sufficient in this musical journey because unless we go deep and contemplate and let the music be a part of you the riaz will not just speak for speak by itself the riaz has to then fit into the mold of your own individual expression and be able to bring out the contemplation that you have been doing about the music the sadhana part is that when you go deep and when you contemplate when you bring out the essence which you have yourself felt and you are able to express it equally uh, that is when the sadhana um, happens and for that riyaz is like a tool and when sadhana is going on the new ideas would come and to again execute them you need riyaz so they that's why i'm saying they go hand in hand while riyaz is a tool sadhana is something that you want to achieve and while you are doing sadhana you also will feel the need for riyaz to execute the things you have understood during your sadhana so that is how i saw my guruji and also uh, you know his son pandit budhaditya mukherji uh, who is an exemplary and one of the greatest sitar maestros today uh, i have seen both of them as idols uh, trying to do their sadhana and riyaz very uh, very consistently and very uh, remarkably the rag and the musician it is always this uh, beautiful relationship <laughs> that that goes on and can be rediscovered every time at every every step mm. when you listen to a rag as you said you listen to shahana kanada or any rag when you listen to a rag the notes of the rag would evoke certain feelings within a musician now if you are as i said if you are honest and if you are sensitive towards those feelings which are being evoked by the notations or not just notations but by the music of the rag or by the characteristic of the rag then you would like to express that once it is once your feeling is up to a brim then it it automatically comes to a point of expression and uh, at that point if we want to just uh, restrict ourselves because i don't want to play in a certain way because that is not what i have been taught or if i want to restrict myself saying that no i want to play like that person then that that sensitivity and all that is gone that reaction to the rag and that you know that the uh, the way you are perceiving the rag and then trying to execute that process itself is gone so that is why i would i always feel that you have to really be open when you are listening learning and then when you are practicing trying not to get influenced by other musicians we can always take the inspiration by learning listening to other musicians but my guruji also i mean i'll just bring this point here my guruji would always encourage me to listen to a lot of musicians but then he would clearly say that don't try to copy any of the musicians while you are listening so you have to listen then just do your you know whatever daily work or whatever then you just when whenever you are playing it it has to be your emotions that are coming through you to express the rag so i think that is uh, what helps a musician to bring out their own individual expression of the rag although the rag is the same 
it uh, it has the similar characteristics it will again sound it, it moves the bandish could be the same everything even the same musician would play it in a different way each time it is rendered and that is because that is only possible if you are open to the rag the way it is right now presenting itself in front of you as a musician so to to be in that state of reception is very important as a performer because uh, then you are able to execute the rag as as it is presenting itself to you when i say that i don't mean very abstract uh, in in a very abstract manner but when i say that i mean that today i might be uh, when i am having my tea today i might have certain feeling uh, of refreshment tomorrow it could be different day after it could be different so it is the same tea that i am having but i still have a different feeling i have to be very sensitive towards that feeling so if i am uh, presenting a rag if i am talking to my friend today i am talking to the same friend tomorrow it will still be different so this is how if you take a rag also if you are talking to a person i am talking to the same person we both may have different feelings and we have to respect that and we have to express that person's characteristics as per our feelings not by what you have told me about that person right so that is how i take this as a musician uh, i would like to perceive a rag and i would like to express it to be able to bring out my own voice and my own expression to that rag to be a good student of indian classical music which is like a vast subject uh, and a very deep subject we should first begin with being an open slate and not have any preconceived uh, 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 any preconceived ideas about what we want to be or what who sh- who should i be playing like who should i be sounding like the more and i think i when i went to my guruji i had a completely clean slate i never ha- wanted to be sounding like a particular artist or i never wanted to be like a particular musician i never never even thought i would be a musician uh, a professional musician for, to begin with i was just uh, learning and trying to get the understand the beauty of this magnificent art form so i think that is a very important character characteristic to have when you are learning because any ideas of set goals or ambitions or or certain um, as i said preconceived ideas may not allow you to receive this uh, this vastness of this knowledge or art form as uh, easily as you could when you are going there with an open mind so a gharana i feel are rich traditional styles which have been evolved through master musicians and uh, they have been taken forward or carried forward by uh, generations or you know like of uh, further many musicians but i feel that gharanas are like flowing river which i mean guruji used to say always that stagnated tradition will never uh, help anybody to grow because it is like a stagnant water body so instead if it is a flowing river then it enriches by whatever is the current uh, you know and it gets more enriched by more number of contributions that are happening it takes good from every aspect and then still keeps the flow of the tradition from where it has begun now in the name of uh, uh, kind of uh, dissolving the boundaries or borders or whatever and not believing in the gharana system i don't know um, if i can suddenly want to make a, my own stream 
through and just cut off myself from the main river body and I want to just go in my own direction, I can still do that. I mean, nobody will stop me. But then I'm also losing a lot of the tradition that uh, has been passed on and on to me, right? So I feel that the gharanas are nothing but guidance, uh, giving guiding, uh, like guiding forces, I would say, to help us stylize our own music and bring out our own individual expression. So running away or going away from them saying that they are not important, I don't really agree with that fact. Uh, because without that, we may be lost in this vast world of Indian classical music. See, gharanas uh, did evolve because of lack of communication or whatever you can say that they were just, you know, uh, a certain style of music was developed richly uh, in a certain area. Then again, another style was developed very much in the area. And because it was not so much globalization, so probably uh, things remained in those families and in that, that's how they had started. But that I feel another very important factor that Gharana did was it used to at least allow the student to to follow a certain path before they start to get overwhelmed with the with you know many things that are out there so if you follow a gharana you are actually kind of guided in a certain direction then of course it's like uh, it's like in a research you know you build upon all what is already there it's not like you start your own fresh uh, new invention all the time it's like research I feel that you have to, you know, the, it allows us to seep in what is already there and then build it, build upon that. So I think the gharanas are still very relevant and important. The need of the times or the need of current uh, situation or the, the present times is that we do need good audience and uh, good students of music. So I think to train the young minds of uh, uh, of today's and coming generations to this classical art form is very important. And uh, the more number of people we train, not just to become, not just to, for them to become musicians, but for them to be able to appreciate this art form, because even to appreciate it to a, a little intellectual uh, level, you need a certain exposure. And probably if some steps are done towards that, I think it is very important because, you know, maybe uh, incorporating in a school curriculum or something like that, or where you can actually give a, or, or probably designing a, a, a way to give exposure to the young minds so that they learn to be a part of this infrastructure of classical music or be a part of this world of classical music i think that is very important The effect that COVID-19 had was, of course, the number of performances got reduced and the gatherings got reduced. Uh, but did it actually impact um, uh, my musical journey? I don't think so, because it gave me a different, um, a, like a much needed uh, time to think reintrospect and also venture out into some different kind of uh, expression through the music which i have probably not done in the past then it also uh, i i also was able to reach out to some with this online you know platforms coming up suddenly during the covid-19 like zoom or whatever you know other methods of reaching out to people globally, I was able to um, conduct a lot of workshops and doing these workshops of music, I, I 
the way I learned from these was how to at least be able to teach uh, or um, teach appreciation for Indian music to many people so that uh, the audience should still be growing. And that was one of the, uh, I would say, um, a very important um, contributions that I felt COVID did was to bring people closer and globally and uh, uh, especially in our field of music, you know, the, there were so many young musicians who started putting out uh, content online and we could listen to so many other musicians and the musicals, the music students also started approaching and uh, learning uh, during this time. So it was a interesting experience, I would say. But now that things are opening up, I think we I'm again eager to go back to performing and uh, you know interact with audiences live. That itself will be, I mean, that will also be very beautiful again. And another thing that I have always believed that Guruji always would tell is whatever happens in life. So he had very clearly told me, I remember this when I was, um, I had played something for him and I was about to go to America and he said, you, you played really well. What do you think you would do to keep up this uh, work? So I just said something mundane, like do, I'll do a lot of riyas or something. But then he said one statement, which even now I keep repeating. And the statement was life will have its ups and downs and you know many things that will come you know come across but never let that affect your music because that is the pillar of your strength and that is something that will always guide you so that has been my mantra so i don't think i feel the need to or i feel that i i will ever get distracted by anything as such and this will always happen continuously. When I was learning, um, I, I, you know, I was very fortunate that in my family, um, we are two sisters, so uh, gender inequality never came in picture. Uh, we were like really, uh, we got the best uh, from my parents. Um, we were exposed to many interesting things, you know, like um, I, I learned driving, I learned, I did everything that was, you know, out there to, to enjoy life. Um, I, I was never restricted, basically. And then, uh, then I, the guru with whom I spent so much of my musical time and, and learning time and uh, my Guruji, Pandit Bimlendu Mukherjee, he also never had this, uh, this thing even occur to me that I'm a girl trying to play something which is not, uh, I would say it was, it is not common or something like that. It was always made you have to do it because it is an art form you are learning an art form and you you just have to do it the way every other student does so up until the you know all through my childhood and into my adulthood i never experienced that i am doing something different because i'm from a different gender which is not as prevalent in the indian classical world or something like that in fact i was quite um uh I was quite unaware of this fact. Uh, and even when I uh, took it as a profession and I started performing, I don't know if I allowed this thing to bother me if there were any so-called discrimination. I would not even call that. I mean, people have been uh, striving hard to get equal opportunities for women in the art form. See, it is just not just in the music field. I uh, I always feel that it is just the social structure that uh, has led to a certain uh, bias, if at all it was there. 
now uh, in today's world i don't think um, anybody calls a, a female vocalist a female vocalist they just say a vocalist you know so this uh, vidushi or whatever this pandita would be performing for you they don't make it so evident that she's uh, like even uh, with i don't know in, even in the uh, times of uh, kesar bai ji or uh, even kishori amonkar ji gan saraswati ji at that time also i don't think uh, they were put in a bracket of female vocalists or anything they were just exemplary or extraordinary vocalists so i think uh, when you are practicing your art form with total dedication and uh, with uh, with the effort to become extraordinary the gender kind of it it surpasses which gender you belong to and the fact that in society it has not still it is probably lesser seen to find uh, women instrumentalists some uh, brackets are still being put that female vocal female sitar player female sarod player female santur player female tabla player that is still happening but i think uh, even that situation is changing very soon uh, according to me spirituality is two or three things um what i feel uh, all spiritual uh, domains advocate mostly is being in present moment uh and being happy being contented and these are like the basic philosophies of uh, any spiritual uh, being state of being right so i feel music defines all these three i mean when you are doing music you are in absolute present moment if you are trying to always focus on what did i practice yesterday let me just play that it doesn't happen that way the music doesn't come so freely okay and to be able to transcend into the subconscious state of mind where you are allowing the music phrases musical phrases to develop one after another and make a it is the the musical form itself of improvisation and constant composing while we are performing is something that allows us to be very very uh, alert in the present moment and not be digressed by any of the past or future anticipations so that itself is spiritual i feel and the fact that it brings happiness and peace to my mind and as a by product to other listeners if at all that is also spirituality in my definition and the fact that uh, that you keep doing it without really you know so there are there are two things that we get the one is a very instant gratification uh when i play for myself or when i play with my music but then again the very next moment i am on a next quest because that is gone that instant gratification is gone and now i have to grow more and i have to do something more to uh to again get that gratification for myself so this quest of knowledge without actually uh, without actually getting some rewards for that is also very spiritual in in its own nature so if we uh, we don't have to really practice spirituality separate of this uh, art form because it itself uh, i feel that the qualities Uh, with which we can benefit in doing in pursuing music as an art form would definitely be these that we be in the present moment we don't let ourselves bothered by all the things going around and just focus on what we are doing at this current moment the fact that we are not letting uh, any rewards or any frustrations affect our music that is also something which we are doing in a more, more spiritual terms and, and uh, the fact that we are giving ourselves happiness and as a by product probably touching some other people's lives that is also uh, something very uh, very spiritual is what i feel so 
I don't know if anything extra has to be done to be able to do music. Music will allow you to do that. Mm, I listen to um, all, uh, you know, good forms of music. Something which is uh, melodious and uh, which has an expression, I try and uh, listen to every, you know, jazz or uh, uh, Indian classical. I listen mostly to vocal, uh, Indian classical vocal music. Mm. And I try to listen to my own music to be, <laughs> to be on this quest uh, of self-improvement and self-introspection. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course, there are great legends uh, who have shown us so much uh, that, you know, we can always be enriched by their music constantly. But I think uh, at a given point of time, you have to, you know, start listening to your own music as to grow in that direction and see where you are. That is the quest that at least I follow. And that inspires me also. I think I spend uh, all the time I'm spending time with music, I'm spending time with my Guruji. So I don't know if it, you know, if I can really say that one hour is, you know, I'm already spending time. So I don't know if one hour is something that important. But yes, I'm, I mean, if I get to, uh, if he, if I get to really hypothetically spend time time then probably i'll play and try and see if there, it brings a smile on his face mm -hmm.